Hi everyone and welcome back to The Journey. As you can see, today we're going to be talking about adrenal cortical insufficiency, also known as Addison's disease. Now before we go ahead and get started, I'm just going to go ahead and give you a quick rundown of how the adrenal glands work so that way when you see the effects of what's going on, it kind of clicks and you get that aha moment, alright? So with the adrenal gland, in general, it regulates sodium and electrolyte in, uh, balance. It also affects carbohydrate, fat, protein, and, and the metabolism. Again, it also influences the development of sexual characteristics just because it's going to secrete um, the sex hormones, all right? Also, it helps to sustain the fight or flight response. Now, with the uh, adrenal gland, I have a little uh, visual here to show you. Okay, the adrenal gland sits on top of each kidney, so you have one adrenal gland um, on each kidney, so therefore you have two adrenal glands in your body. Alright, so here for demonstration purposes, I only just drew one, but just imagine that there is another set here. Okay, now this is the adrenal gland that sits right on top of the kidneys, and you have two, uh, two layers. Okay, the outermost layer is your adrenal cortex, and with the adrenal cortex, it helps to synthesize um, glucocorticoid steroids as well as mineral corticoid and it also helps to secrete small amounts of the sex hormones known as androgen and estrogen, okay? Now that happens on the outer layer of this adrenal gland. Now on the inner layer where I have my adrenal medulla, okay, my adrenal medulla works as part of the sympathetic nervous system and it helps to produce that uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine, okay? That's where you get your flight or fight, uh, fight or flight response, okay? So that happens in the middle section here. So this is where my norepinephrine, my epinephrine, pretty much your adrenaline, right? The adrenaline rush, also adrenal gland, adrenaline, okay? So that happens in the medulla. And the other things that I mentioned happen on the cortex, okay? But together, they're known as the adrenal gland. They sit on top of the kidney. Right, so now to go ahead and get started with Addison's disease. What is Addison's disease, okay? It is an adrenal cortex function of inadequate um, demands to meet the patient needs for cortical hormones. So pretty much it's a decreased amount of cortical hormones for the adrenal glands to function and do what it's supposed to do, okay? So it's not producing enough, right? Where that's why we have insufficiency. We're lacking, we don't have, okay? So the causes could be, could be the fact that it's autoimmune or idiopathic atrophy of the adrenal glands. Anytime you hear the word idiopathic, idio, almost think of idiot, idiot, sorry, and patho, pathic, think of pathology, okay? So an idiot pathology, if you put the words together, pretty much mean that we don't know the pathology, okay? It's just something that happens and they don't know the reason why it happens, okay? So. Um, those are the two things um, that you mainly see in most cases. Also, it can be a surgical removal of both adrenal glands, okay, and infection of the glands as well. The main infection that you may see that may cause uh, Addison's disease is pretty much your TB or your histoplastosis, uh, okay, those are the most common infections. And what they do, they destroy the adrenal gland tissues, okay. Also, the reason could be inadequate secretions of ACTH from the pituitary gland, okay? So when I get to the pituitary, I'll go ahead and let you know exactly you have two. You have the posterior and anterior and exactly what hormones are being stored because some hormones have to be secreted in order for another hormone to function or to work, okay? So in this case, the adrenal gland is supported with the ACTH hormone that is produced from the pituitary, okay? Now, it could be an inadequate secretion of that, so therefore it decreases the amount of stimulation that the adrenal gland gets, and that um, could be because a pituitary gland just doesn't function well, okay? Also, it could be because of therapeutic um, use of corticosteroids. So there are times when people are using corticosteroids because again, it has anti-inflammatory properties and you know, patients may be using it for that uh, aspect. And because they are, it affects their adrenal glands. And what happens is you have an adrenal cortical insufficiency. And you can see this within two to four weeks of treatment um, of corticosteroids. All of a sudden, you may see a suppression of the adrenal gland in itself. Clinical manifestations, which is also known as our signs and symptoms, which is also known as our 
nursing assessment. So if you don't remember anything else with Addison's disease, please remember the signs and symptoms. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to kind of point out the differences and stress on which signs and symptoms you definitely need to watch out for that are your red flags, your alert, okay? Because it's opposite disease pattern is going to be your Cushing syndrome, which I'll go ahead and get into that in another video. But definitely, if I had um, enough uh, enough space, I would definitely have the signs and symptoms side by side next to each other so that way you can see off the bat that, that they are pretty much the complete opposite of each other. You know, most disease patterns don't work that way. You know, they're either, you know, completely different from each other, but this one is like you, the mirror, like a, 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 a reflection on the opposite end, okay? So if you don't remember anything else, please remember the signs and symptoms. You are going to be tested on it. I remember when I had um, this topic in nursing school, we definitely had questions about the electrolyte levels and different, definitely different signs and symptoms. And you don't want to get confused with cushions and Addison's, okay? And kind of reverse the symptom just because they're so similar, okay? So to begin with, I have my muscle weakness, all right? I have the fact that I don't have an appetite, okay? So anytime you see anorexia, it doesn't mean that they're starving themselves or anything like that. It just means poor appetite, okay? Also, you have your GI symptoms, which you have your abdominal pain, you have nausea, and you also have diarrhea, all right? Any type of GI symptom that can fall into that category, it's going to be seen with Addison's disease. Also, uh, emaciation, which is pretty much extreme weight loss, whereas in Cushing's, you're going to have a weight gain, okay? So, already there, I have my difference, okay? Addison's, okay? I need to, um, I need to add, right, on weight. So, if anything, when you see Addison, add, Right, I need to add on weight because they're going to be losing weight. Cushing's, they're gaining weight, okay? Fatigue, dark pigmentation of uh, the mucous membrane, okay? Or the skin as well. The most common areas is your knuckles, okay? Your knees, your elbows, okay? If you're already a darker complexion, for the most part, most uh, dark skinned African American people, our, our knuckles, our um, elbows, right? are kind of darker, but it's going to be a difference where you can look and see, okay, this wasn't what it was before, okay? So as a nurse, you know, pick up on those subtle signs and symptoms that you may see. Hypotension, okay? Whereas cushions, you have hypertension, all right? Low blood uh, glucose level, whereas in cushions, you have high um, blood glucose level, okay? Here I have low sodium, right whereas in cushions I'm going to have high sodium here I have high potassium in cushions I'm going to have a low potassium okay and then I have my mental changes which um, you can see a uh, depression um, emotional ability where it fluctuates up and down it's never stable um, apathy which they're not happy they just kind of slumber you know and then you also have your confusion okay with these type of patients so again I'm gonna point out the differences Hypotension, cushions, hypertension. Addison's, low blood glucose, cushion, high blood glucose. Addison's, low uh, serum level, um, sodium level, cushion, high sodium level. I have high potassium for Addison, low potassium for cushion, okay? Poor appetite and weight loss with Addison. Obesity, trunk obesity right with cushions so like i said it's like a complete opposite of, of, of mirroring each other to continue on with the signs and symptoms you also have something known as the addisonian crisis and with the addisonian crisis that's a place where you don't want to get because this is where you see the patient um, gets into a circulatory shock okay now with this it occurs mainly from stress with dehydration and they're going to look cyanotic or um Pretty much what that means is just like a bluish tint color. Uh, of course, the lighter you are, the more you're able to see the cyanosis. The darker you are, it's harder to see, but you can also see a paleness within the colors. You know, the cap refills. You know, it's not it's not looking nice and pink. Okay, so um, cyanosis is one of the big things. Also, your regular signs and symptoms for your circulatory shock, where you have um, pallor, right? They're looking kind of pale. 
a rapid or weak uh, pulse. You also have rapid respiration and a decrease in your blood pressure, all right? Those are your classic signs of a shock. And of course, this is letting you know that your patient is deteriorating and they're deteriorating very, very fast, okay? So you definitely want to, you know, think quick and fast. Definitely want to call the doctor, alert them, let them know, you know, and try to, as much as you can to prevent Addisonian crisis from even occurring in the first place because this is just like worst case scenario within Addison's disease, okay? And then again, you also have your headache. Now we have our diagnostic testing. So with our diagnostic testing, the main thing is going to be our lab test results. So um, our early morning serum, cortisol, or plasma of the ACTH is going to be used to differentiate primary adrenal to secondary adrenal. And a case of secondary adrenal is pretty much um, the pituitary gland where they're not functioning. So therefore, because the primary problem is um, is, is the fact that the pituitary are not functioning. The secondary problem that stems from that is now the adrenal glands is not able to work because it's not able to produce the ACTH from the pituitary to give to the adrenal glands to carry out its function. That would be like a secondary type of uh, problem. Um, primary Addison's disease will probably be something where damage occurred itself to the adrenal, whereas outside factors occurs which then affect the adrenal those are secondary okay so just in case if you saw primary or secondary that's to kind of clear up what's the difference okay primary is the adrenal gland itself secondary is outside factors that end up influencing the uh the adrenal gland okay also within your lab testing right what are you going to see the same signs and symptoms that you saw for addison's disease you're going to have a decrease in your glucose count you're going to have a decrease in your sodium level you're going to have an increase in your potassium an increase in your uh, white blood cell okay and your diagnosis confirmed by the decreased levels of the adrenal cortical hormones in the bloodstream or within the urine in itself okay so when they're checking for the blood they're going to check for this test right to check for that and see hey is that level high or is it low and if it's low why is it low okay and then from there they'll kind of figure out and investigate and do more testing okay also you can also give uh metal all right which also can be given as to stimulate the ACTH um if there's no response then most likely you um, have Addison's disease. Now we have the medical management for Addis Addison's disease. Now with Addison's disease, just think about the fact that you have a lack, right? You have a lack of these hormones that are help to regulate their day function, right? Your cortisol level helps with the stress, right? And help with coping. You have your um, your sex hormones, right? Your um, estrogen and the androgens, right? All these different things that the adrenal gland helps with, right? You have a lack of so you start to see and exhibit these things, right? So what are you going to do? With Addison's, right? We're going to add. So I'm just going to put that here, right? Addison's, we're going to add. So we're going to give hydrocortisone, which is your solucortec, which is your uh, one of the steroid. Um, that's going to be given IV, followed by 5% um, dextrose and your normal saline, okay? So again, why am I giving the D5, right? Remember, I have low glucose levels, so therefore I need replacement for that, right? I have a low sodium level, so therefore I need replacement for that, okay? So that's kind of uh, self explanatory. It helps you kind of put the picture together to see exactly how are we fixing this problem? What are we doing? We're giving what the body lacks, okay? Also, your vasopressor means for your low blood pressure, right? What is one of the signs and symptoms? High hypotension. So if it gets to the point, especially if the patient has Addisonian crisis, right, and they're not able to get fluids or bolus to help bring that up, our next step is going to be our vasopressor. And vasopressor, you can have vasopressin, you can have um, norepinephrine, you can have epinephrine, you can have, um, which is also known as, the norepinephrine is also known as uh, levofed, okay? Um, you also have... Um, neosinephrine. Okay, so there's multiple different drugs that work as vasopressors um, to help increase your blood pressure. So it all depends on what the doctor wants and what they prescribe. Okay, again, antibiotics if the cause is from an infection. Remember earlier, causes could be if you have TB, if you have the um, 
uh, histoplasmosis, right, or just other infections that may have been the cause of this, right, you want to treat them. Also, if they can take oral intake, right, they should be initiated as soon as possible. Another thing that we have is your lifelong replacement of corticosteroids. So again, this person, for the rest of their life, they're going to need um, a continuation of your steroids, right? Because the body is not able to make the steroids that it needs to carry out throughout the day. So therefore, you're going to get artificial steroids, right? Which are your corticosteroids. Now, um, during testing, just a little hint or something to kind of um, get you to know what are your corticosteroids, they all end in zones, okay? So I have hydrocortisone, right? I also have fluorocortisone, right? And then if you saw up here, hydrocortisone. So there are different types, but they're all end in zone. Prednisone, that's another one, okay? So they all end in zones, and that lets you know those are your corticosteroids, okay? So these are what you're going to be replacing the body with. And then you may also have additional supplementary um, therapy with glucocorticoids for those stressful procedures, right? Whether they're going to dentists or um, whatever it is that they may do, um, activities, uh, working out, right? Anytime your body's under a um, great amount of stress, right, your body releases cortisol, right, and the glucose and things like that to kind of help deal and cope with the stress. But your body doesn't have this, so therefore you're going to have supplementary um, therapy in the case when you are doing those procedures or if you have a significant illness because again your body is under a lot of stress okay. and finally we have our nursing interventions so as nurses we're going to assess the patient right we're going to monitor our vital signs and you know vital signs tell us everything right you can tell us our blood pressure our heart rate our respirations those things already let us know if the patient is going to be in distress or not especially if their body is going into circulatory shock right regular shock so just the vital signs alone can um, help us out. Also, you want to monitor for Addisonian crisis. So again, your vital signs help you to figure out, is this person going into Addisonian crisis? Are their bodies going through a shock? Okay, which is the main thing that we want to prevent because that is a complication you do not want to encounter. Okay? Electrolyte replacements. Remember, our potassium is high, our sodium is low, right? Our glucose is low. So with these things, you definitely want to give uh, electrolyte replacements, okay? Um, that just helps to deal with, uh, to prevent dysrhythmias from occurring, right? And for the body to function at its optimal level. Also, you want to maintain a proper diet for the patient. So these patients, you know, you want to make sure that they're getting the um, adequate intake that their body needs so that way their body can heal and, and do what it's supposed to do, especially if they had to get surgery to remove the tumor that's causing the secondary um, problems of the adrenal glands or if they have to get the adrenal glands, um, you know, um, repaired or things like that, of that nature, okay? Always want to have a good diet. Also, you want to minimize stress, right? Because again, the, these hormones that help to deal with stress are located in the adrenal glands. If my adrenal glands are not functioning or working, right, I want to make sure that I have less stress as possible, all right? And so you want to maintain activity tolerance. What kind of things would cause the stress, you know? Um, working out, lifting up different weights and things like that. If their body can't tolerate or handle that, you want to minimize those things and kind of um, individualize their care and their plan of doing things that they're able to tolerate. Okay, so activity tolerance is a big thing. Find out what, can, what they can tolerate. Okay, you also want to weigh the patient daily because again, you have poor appetite, you have the extreme weight loss. So you want to make sure, are this patient gaining weight? Are they losing more weight? Where were they before? How are they now? How, how often are they losing weight? Are they losing three to five pounds a week? You know, because that's a significant difference, you know, versus just one pound or maybe they may stay the same. So you definitely want to watch out for that. And you also want to maintain a quiet environment. Okay, again, that helps to minimize the stress on whatever else is going on with the patient, okay? You give them a more relaxed, calm state, and they can kind of internalize, and you can be there for them, support them in this process. Um, they can have their family members there. So again, that is pretty much it when it comes to Addison's disease. I hope that you find this video very helpful. If you do, go ahead and give this a thumbs up. If you have any comments or things that you want to ask or comment about, go ahead and put that in the comment section below. Again, remember to check out my description box to see all the added information. 
And again, if you have not subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and click that subscribe button. You can also check me out on Instagram. And again, thanks for coming on this journey. I'll see you on the next one. Bye.